how to be crazy enough. I want to talk to you today from the subject how to be crazy enough to get what you want. What you have to do is lose your no I can mind and find your yes I can mind. So you see, you've got to lose one of these minds. And which one of these minds is it that you have to lose to get what you want? The no I can't mind. Staring at your greatness, feeling ill-prepared Just a little crazy, just a little scared Leaning on a logic, keeping you from your cares Just a little crazy, just a little scared That normalcy that nags you to stay and never dare To move beyond the box that the devil has prepared Your friends and your folks were raised and played there So it's all they ever known and all they have to share Few to try to push you, many to keep you there Just a little crazy, just a little scared Chance is a choice and curses live in your cares Just a little crazy, just a little scared A state of stagnation with no flash or flare Days are all the same with no glow or glare The sickness that secures you when fears are all shared Where very few are crazy and many are just scared The status quo's tragic but lingers in the air Blocking the blessings that await you upstairs There's only one way that you can go from here Just a little crazy, just a little scared To the promise that the process breeds if you can bear To give chase it awaits all who dare To run it down and grab it regardless of the fears Blessing those crazy enough to do it scared So I'll fight on until I right all wrongs from the Daytime until the night lights on I'ma take flight cause it's the right time For me to write and enlighten the minds I've spawned to show up, grow up And glow up, rearrange reality And sicken my enemies till they throw up Trapped in their own minds while I glow up Putting it down for minds till I go up Above past failures, ignoring all fears Cause that false evidence ain't as real as it appears When you drown out doubt and blood, sweat, and tears And focus on your goal, the way will be made clear So visualize all the victories that you wanna see And what your mind projects is what you're gonna see On the screen displaying your lifetime You'll find that it projects what originates in the mind This used to be a movie house Way back up there somewhere is a projector. They never took the projector out. Up here is a big screen that we've used two or three times. What you see on that screen does not originate on that screen. What you see on the screen originates where? In the projector. So you see, what you are experiencing on the screen of your life does not originate on the screen. If you don't like what's on the screen, it doesn't do any good to get mad with the screen. See, if you see something on that screen that you don't like, you can go up there with a knife and just cut it to pieces. But what would happen? It would reflect on the back wall. If you want to change what is on the screen of experience, you have to go up to the projector of mind. What I see with my inner eye has power to displace and replace that which is in my outer world. The film in the projector is greater than the image on the screen. If you want to change the image on the screen, you've got to go back up to the projector and change the film. What is that? The thought. What you see out there is really controlled by what you're seeing in here. Can you go 31 days without drinking alcohol? Are you trying to get fit and healthier in the new year? If so, I want to invite you to join the Sobriety and Black Families for our second annual Alcohol Free and Fit Challenge 2023. Now for this challenge, there are only two rules. Rule number one, no alcohol from January 2nd to February 2nd of 2023. Rule number two, you've got your own personal fitness or health challenge. You get to choose your challenge. Maybe you want to lose weight, Hello? Hello. increase your bench. All right, Joe. Maybe you want to be more consistent in the gym. Maybe you yeah. want to run a certain amount of distance in a certain amount of time. All right. Or maybe you want to cut out other things in your life like red meat, pork, sex, weed, whatever it is. You get to choose your own personal fitness or health challenge to go share along this, with the alcohol free Boy, challenge good. we even start on january 2nd so that you can bring in the new year however you choose now if you're interested in joining us you can go to www.sobrietyandblack.com click sign up and join us 
for the Alcohol Free and Fit Challenge 2023. Back when I... Y'all forgive me, man. Things going a little crazy, trying to put things together, trying to put things together. Like to welcome you. My name is Neve Satterfield with Sobriety in Black. We're here for SIB Live. As it says, uh, for those, shout out to everybody that's uh, checking us out on YouTube, on the YouTube channel at Sobriety in Black, on Facebook at Sobriety in Black, on Facebook and in our exclusive alcohol free and fit family group as well that we just got started all right want to give a special shout out to everybody hope everybody's good uh just working on these little technical difficulties nothing big nothing big we just got to keep it pushing hope everybody's well give me one sec here let me throw the little a little banner up here there we go all right if you still want to sign up for the Alcohol Free and Fit Challenge, you're definitely open to do that. It doesn't matter what time of the month it is, even though we started, what, yesterday? Uh, what was it? Was it yesterday? The, two, the second? Oh, no, we started on the second. So this is, geez, day three, actually. <laughs> I'm all over the place. Went and just got back from working out, establishing my son's baseline. And I'm going to actually play a little, little video of that to kind of give you an idea how you can start with the baseline. If you have a goal such as ours, we're working on increasing our max. And um, I'm actually going to be filling out my part and talking about my son's part for the uh, the packet. So if you have your packet, might be good for you to go ahead and um, go ahead and open your packet up. And, you know, you can follow along with us. If you want to leave a comment, I'm going to I'm trying to be more diligent about reading comments. If you have comments you want to post, go ahead and do that. And I'm going to try and follow along with you. Give me one sec here. I'm trying to do, I guess, a whole bunch of different things. I'm wondering why am I? There's not a live chat. I think I might not have done a thing for the live chat on YouTube because I don't see. Oh, wait, there it is. OK, so. Cool. So you could definitely leave a comment. Maybe tell us where you're at so that I can see if I can I can see these comments or whatnot. Oh, hold on. Ah, there we go. All right. You're working it out here, working it out. So first of all, I hope everybody's having a good week. I know for some folks, uh, either you went back to school or your kids are going back to school this week um, or you've been back to work and this is day three back to work for you. Still happy new year. Hope everything's going well with you. And I definitely want to encourage you with regards to this challenge. We're starting off good for those that are, you know, a part of the challenge. You know, pat yourself on the back. Be proud about the fact that you are starting off healthier, smarter, stronger, and being more diligent and deliberate in your health goals and in your, you know, sobriety goals. If you're like me, trying to, you know, maintain attain and maintain your sobriety. And for those that, you know, normally drink, but have decided to set the bottle down for this month, for this 31 day challenge, hats off to you as well. Uh, you actually will probably be struggling a little bit more than me. I haven't had a drink in 11 years. So for those who have stopped, maybe you drank for New Year's or something like that, and you're getting off to a nice dry start for dry January, uh, you know, hey, congratulations. All right. What I'm going to do is just so I'm going to play I had posted a video the other day, and it kind of is going to lead into this packet this first week and establishing kind of your baseline. Because like I had said a couple of days ago on my broadcast, you know, you've got to know just like a GPS, you've got to know where you're at, right, in order to know where you're going to get to your goal, which is, you know, the, whatever your February, your goal for February 2nd is your outcome based goal. You've got to know that. So I'm going to be tracking mine in real time. My son's out here. I got my son out here. So he's uh, picked, he's chosen his personal goal for the challenge, his fitness goal for the challenge. He doesn't drink. He's only 16. So let, praise God he doesn't drink at 16. Uh, so he's really just kind of focused on his fitness, his fitness goal. And so I'm going to play a little video of uh, 
uh, our day to day and him establishing his baseline, as I say, his baseline, your baseline would be where you're at now. Right. Then you put the plan together and that packet to help you put the plan together for where you're going. All right. If you have any questions or any comments, feel free to post um, uh, and I'll read trying to read those comments. And, you know, hopefully I can address them with regards to your personal goals. Feel free to share this video. Um, as I sit here, like I said, I'm sitting here practicing, getting things together. I'll be here for a second, whether you're checking me out or not. So I want to encourage you to, you know, I want to encourage interaction and whatnot, although I'll be presenting uh, my journey uh, with regards to this challenge. All right. So I'm going to play this first video real quick, and then I'm going to talk a little bit, then we'll get into the packet. All right. All right, off to the gym to get the baseline. See what we're gonna attack for the, for this month for the alcohol free. Hold on, that's the wrong one. <laughs> Sorry, that was wrong. We play this one first to lay down the point. Because right. you say, all right. And people talk about like, oh, I don't have time. Like, okay, let's put these things together here because you say you don't have time to you know to put into your health. The, I would argue that taking care of yourself gives is the only thing that gives you more time. All right. Oh, wait. Sorry. All right. So I just wanted to lay that point because Michael Jai White makes a very good point. This is something that if you started this challenge, another reason why you should be proud of yourself. He says, you know, a lot of people say they don't have time to work out. They don't have time to look for healthier alternatives in the store to the foods that they eat now in order to eat healthier. Right. But the fact of the matter is working out, dealing with those healthier things, those health things actually gives you more time. Right. More time on this earth. The healthier you are, the you increase your chances of living longer. Right. I mean, there's plenty of studies that says the healthier you are, the longer you live, the less fat you hold, whether you're trying to lose weight. Right. The stronger you are, whether you're trying to gain muscles or strengthen your joints or increase your endurance and cardio, the chance, you know, you increase your chances of living a longer life, which not only benefits you, but it benefits those you love. Right. So that's something that you want to think about when you are, you know, as we move on this journey. Right. Now, I'm going to play one more video that I think is very poignant that kind of leads home to the point. And then I'm going to get into establishing, I established my son's baseline for his goal. And just to give you an idea of what you want to think about, how you can go about, in, you know, establishing your baseline so that you can figure out where you're going. Like I said, with the GPS, I always use that example and I'll belabor it, right? GPS starts with your current location, gives you the steps, right? Those are the, in, in our case, it would be the behavior goals that will get you to your outcome, your destination, all right, so let me play this real quick. All right, give me a sec here. All right. It's important to start with the... When looking to make any kind of improvement in life, it's important to start with the truth. The truth about your limitations. The truth about your capabilities. The truth about the losses suffered as a result of your addictions the truth about why you drink, and the truth about the opportunities presented to you in sobriety. Looking at how much money you spent on your addiction will not only let you know how much you lost, but also how much you have the potential to gain in the future. Assessing the negative influences you are around in addiction will also be key in helping you understand the potential for the better connections you get to make in the future as you heal from the past. The truth is the fact that you're even considering a change for the better increases the potential for a stronger future for yourself and those you love. Be sober, be vigilant, and be great. So as I had stated, you know, you need to start with the truth. You need to start with the truth. And that is the truth about your limitations, your capabilities, your time, the things that you're going to need to invest in order to uh, in order to live a healthier life and in order to achieve the OK, well, OK. And in order to achieve your goals with regards to this challenge and with regards to your sobriety or with regards to any type of improvement that you are seeking. 
Hey, shout out, Derek. I appreciate that. Fam V, you're going to see. I appreciate that, man. All right. Somebody who enjoys the book. Yes, uh, you can get Sobriety in Black at Amazon. Just Google, uh, just type in the search and you'll check that out. All right. But you definitely need to start with the truth. And so for my son, and I'm going to show this video. I did it myself, but I kind of put together this video of my son just really tracking his uh, his max, what is he, what he was looking at is his max for, I think this was for, what was this for? This is a deadlift. Okay. So he wants to increase his deadlift max. And so this little short video is kind of going to show you, uh, about him establishing his baseline. All right. This is him. Like I said, a little short video you can check out about him establishing his baseline. All right. Fit challenge. Let's do it. <laughs> All right, off to the gym to get the baseline. See what we're gonna attack for the, for this month for the alcohol free and fit challenge. Let's do it. <laughs> oh, is it pairing with mine? All right, the boys going for 300. One rep. Let's get it. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> You got it, 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 you that's what's up. Let's go. Let him know. Let's go. <laughs> Jesus. All right. Sorry about that, guys. Had that mic muted for a minute talking to myself. All right. So my son is looking at, uh, hey, 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 Ron, my man. Good to see you, man. Oh, OK. You enjoy the book, man. I enjoy it. I appreciate that. Hey, hey, I'm, I'm, I appreciate you just stopping by, team. I appreciate you stopping by and supporting, man. And it's important with the book as well. All right. So with regards to my son's truth, as y'all saw, his his personal record was 300 pounds he did 300 pounds twice he tried to go for that third one he couldn't do it so now he knows his absolute max in this point right so that's what you have to do you have to establish where you're at in order to know where you're going right in order to know where you're going so for everybody it's going to be a little different all right now, I'm going to put up the packet, and then I'm going to kind of really kind of go through it, if not for him. I got him sitting over here, so I'm just going to shoot him some questions, unless you want to come on over here and, and hang out. All right, my son's decided he's going to come and get on camera with me, so y'all going to see me. We're going to actually fill his packet up. Hey, say what's up, son. Hey, what's good? <laughs> this is H2, all right, Hanif Omari Satterfield the second for the bros I'm going to do, so you know I had to put the two. You know, ain't no juniors over here, baby. <laughs> Come on over here, man. Let's, let's get some room for you, man. Get some room for you. All right, all right, all right. How'd you feel about getting that max in today? Uh, it felt really good. Every, uh, you know, back day I've been doing, uh, been making progress, you know, been able to lift more and more weight. So just try to go higher. You know? There you go. Trying to go higher. Okay, cool. So what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to share the packet. And for those that I was, I was trying to hook up uh, Clubhouse, but things got messed up and I don't have time to try and get on there. So sorry, I'll be on club. I'll try and get on clubhouse tomorrow. And we'll, we'll resolve that. All right. But let me open up. I'm going to open up a packet for him. Matter of fact, I'm going to just use what I started on mine and put you in there. Give me one second, guys. Give me one second. We're going to get this all squared away here. All right. And then the packet. Boom. All right. So let me share this. Give me one second, guys. All right. Getting everything together. And if you want, go ahead and get your packet and you can uh, kind of follow along and it may, it may, you know, do you some good here. All right. Let's see. When, uh, or you know what? No. Yeah, we'll do this. Boom. All right. There we go. All right. So 
Let's see. Should I make the packet bigger? Should I do it? Let's see how it looks. Is that better? That looks better. All right. We got a couple screens going here. All right. So I'm not going to worry so much for my son. This is where you'll put the participant name. So we're going to put his name in here. D. Oops. I should spell your name right. <laughs> Me being that I named and everything. Let me get that. All right. Boom, 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 boom. All right. Two. All right. I should have sent it that. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go now for smart goal worksheet one. With regards to. All right. So worksheet two, this is the fitness and health goal. All right. So uh, I'm going to worry about today's. Well, today's date. Well, for now, I'm just going to put because uh, you started on 2023. Right. Target date. Of course, we know is two, two, 2023. All right. So now with regards to your goal, son, you uh, maxed at 300 two times, yes. right, for your deadlift. So what do you think is, uh, if you if you had to state your goal in one sentence, what would you say it is? Uh, I want to be able to put up 320 pounds in a one rep by the end of the month. Okay, 320. You then add a little bit more, huh? Yeah, yeah. Back, okay. back then we were saying 315, but no, I'm gonna say 320. Okay. And I feel like I feel like like in a week I could do 320 once, which is why I mean a uh, 315 once, which is why I want to increase it to like uh three okay. 320. 320? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now remember we want yeah, we do want to make it achievable, so we don't want to add too much, right? right? Uh let's see, by end of whoops. And uh Challenge. Oof. All right. And I'm going to skip some of this stuff. Uh, spe specifically, we know we're doing 320 pound deadlift. Yes. Right. Lift at least once, one time by the end of the challenge. All right. Now, is this measurable? Um, how will you know that you've reached this goal? We would say, what? If on February 2nd, you hit it. Hmm. At least once, right? 321. Yes. All right. So is this relevant? Let me ask you this. Why is this goal significant to you? What what is why do you want to you know achieve this goal? What do you think? Uh this goal is significant to me just because I just want to get stronger. Like in every uh, in terms of muscular uh, ability and mm -hmm. you know, able to pick up more weight. And for every exercise that I do, I want to get better at that, especially deadlift, because uh, you know, back is such an important part of the body. So okay. You know, and I that's just, why you're concentrating on the back. Yeah. And just being able to increase the amount I can lift, uh, you know, makes me feel better about myself, you knowing that I um, am making progress. OK. You know, OK. My goals, physical goals. OK. And yeah, the back is kind of like the tree trunk, right? Your mm -hmm. spine, you know, everything, it kind of it really does hold everything up yeah. and keep everything kind of together. Right. Yeah. Important so, for posture. Ah, OK, good. Important. And that's good, too, because a lot of you, you know, when you're in front of the computer, a lot of times you're hunched over, stuff like that. So this kind of keeps you upright, right? When yes. you're sitting and stuff like that. Uh, posture. And I'm going to put major part of body. All right. And I'm just to kind of go cool. OK. And we already know when. That's February 2nd. Now, let me ask you this. And this is where we start with the truth. What are some of the potential obstacles that you may find throughout this month, right? Because you start school, what, Monday? Yes. Okay, so what are some of the obstacles you would list? Um, school isn't really an issue for me because I still routinely just go to the gym after school. Okay. So I'd say one big obstacle would be the fact that I'm also working out a lot of other muscle groups. So like, because okay. I only train back really once in a week. But, okay. uh, you know, even with that, I've still been able to make a lot of progress with back. But um, that could be one of the reasons why I might plateau. So okay. I just have to make sure that um, on the days like I, I do, I make as much progress as possible. So, OK, so the fact that you only train at one time, I mean, we won't say only, but you train at one time per week. You have to make now you have to kind of do it with a knowing that you got to make a certain amount of progress yes. whereas before it was just kind of like okay you didn't really have a goal per se it was just to actually do it yeah it was more of a consistency goal okay if i do it once per week but one day you may do it for 15 minutes another day you may do it for an hour mm -hmm. now that you have a specific number you're trying to reach a measurable goal there may be a certain amount of time that you need to 
to dedicate to it. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay. Um, would you say there are any other potential obstacles that you have to look at? Um, other than that, there, there's really nothing else. I mean, like it, during back days, I don't really feel any in like super hindrances. I mean, there's my leg and I had surgery on it and that sometimes interferes, but like, um, right. cause you know, it might hurt sometimes, but like most of the time I don't feel it as much. So, okay. Uh, I don't think it's so important to list it as an obstacle. So okay, I think back just having the you know only training once per week is the only thing that might hold me back. But other okay, than that, well let me ask you this: What if? Because we also got to think about some what ifs. Mm. Your leg, right? Because you're doing deadlift. Because I know when we when you went today, the first time you did it, you said your leg you felt a little tingle. Yeah. Uh, but then when you did it the second time, you didn't. So yeah. It was kind of working it out. What if it was in? Then at that what would, at that point I'd have to do other back exercises and I wouldn't be able to deadlift. So that is something to take into consideration there. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. So that's good to think about. And we're gonna okay. So what are let me ask you this for we'll just take with these two, right? Back days being one time per week could be a possible obstacle because you're not really hit you're only basically you're only gonna hit it your back four times, right? In the whole during the whole challenge. What are some solutions or some possible modifications you might you might be able to make if need be? Uh, I could switch out other days for back days so that I can work it out more often in the week. Okay. So um, you know, if I'm doing like a, you know, a, a leg day or an arm day that week, I could say, okay, I can, I can afford to switch it out for a back day to reach my goal. Okay, so you might add a day possibly. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that's a good point. All right. right. And then with the leg surgery thing, I think you kind of alluded to it. If your leg did start, you know, getting really bad, what are some things that you could do? Um, I could try finding a posture for a deadlift that like doesn't involve too much leg activation, and see if I can still reach the goal without having to put too much pressure on the leg. Okay. Or do something else that can still tone your back up without involving your knees. Yeah. So okay. I, like I could get closer towards reaching the goal for a deadlift without actually doing it. Doing it. Right. Yeah. And then once it heals, you can try and see what's up. Yeah. Okay. I'll just put no knee exercise. Right. Mm. Okay. Good. Okay. And are there any people you could ask for help? Like with regards to maybe, um, cause of course we're, what we, what we know is, you know, okay, just do more deadlifts, add more days. Are there any people you could talk to to maybe get some other insight mm -hmm. into how you could improve your deadlift? Are there any people you could think of? Mm -hmm. I know uh, somebody you you every once in a while when you come out here we work with that you may be able to. Oh talk yeah, to. for sure. Uh, my dad, my dad yeah. can help me out all but, day. Um, but who else? Who do uh, I take you to? Oh, for Co boxing, Coach Ken. Coach Ken, yeah, right? Ken Wyatt. You yeah. know, and you may talk to him. Now, anybody who don't know Ken White, he's the baddest in Dallas when it comes to training. Great physical trainer. Shout out to Big Ken. I'm going to be hollering at you soon, brother. But, yeah, you could talk to him, right? Who else uh, uh, in L.A. you do boxing training with occasionally? Oh, Coach Sloan. Coach Sloan. Root to the rest. My uh, man Sloan. My deuce tail, man. All right. So, Coach Sloan. So, those are a couple of people that you know uh, that you could talk to that may be able to give you some other insight. Okay. Yes. And that's good because even in, with sobriety, having a support system, connecting with people, those who've read my book, they know about the power of connecting with people, right? It's something that, you know, you could consider because these two individuals, coach Ken and coach Sloan, they both are professionals when it comes to training. You know, I'm kind of a layman. We're both lay people. You know, we have some, of course, experience working out, but as far as doing it on a professional level, that's something they know. And there may be something that we're not considering, right? right. There may be some nutritional things we may consider. I was thinking about that as well, right? right? All right, good job. Yeah, oh yeah, sounds like nerve damage. Yeah, well, what it was, was he had his growth plate taken out to even out his legs. And so that's that's what it was, but it may be, it may be nerve damage. I appreciate that, that piece of input, Craig. Good stuff. And yeah, see, as we get more advice, you know, we learn more. So that's good. Yeah. All right. So we're going to go now. We're going to go here into this is where we were talking about setting up your behavior goals. And we've kind of talked about it in the smart goals thing. Yeah. So your outcome goal, uh, what's your outcome goal? My outcome goal? For yeah. What did we say? Yep. Oh, we said uh, 320. 320, 320 one time end of the month. That's the yeah. outcome. We won't know if you get there until the end of the month. Right. Now, what are some of the behavior goals? Matter of fact, 
And then we have that sheet for this. So we say the same thing, 320, three pound, 20 pound deadlift, lift, I'll put times one by Feb second, right? All right. And then, hold on, let me make sure I save this here. What? Okay, well, we'll save it later. All right. What are some of the behavior-based goals with regards to what you're going to do? So just training every time I have a back day. That's a that's what I'm okay. making sure I train. What's a, a specific way of saying that? You say every time you have a back day. How many back days do you have? Four, uh, four in the month. Okay, so, so four back days. Train back four times. This we'll just I'll put this month, but during or I'll just say uh, during challenge. All right, that's a behavior that's going to get you there. Now, let me ask you this: You've been training four times. You you train uh once a week leg days? Yes. Normally, okay, and you're not at three twenty. Uh, no. Right. So. Do you think that there may be a need to either do you need to modify those four days, add days, right? Because what I'm saying is this, if your behavior is already normally four times a day, mm. I mean, four days a month, once a week, and you're not at 320 mm. and you do the exact same thing four days for those four, you see what I'm saying? Mm. Why, what would the ex expectation be that you would increase it? Or is there something that you need to add or take away in order to get to a higher max? Mm -hmm. Because your four once a week has gotten you to your max now of 300. Right. We're talking about adding an extra 20 pounds. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you this. Over those four, what would you do different? What could you possibly do differently, modify with your behavior in order to reach a higher? Because it does kind of mean that you'd have to do something a little different. Right. Right. So within those workouts, what do you think? Um, like, let's say this next one, week one, you already maxed out at 315 this week or 300. Uh, you did 300 twice, actually. Yes. This week, right. So. What do you think behavior wise you would need to do or maybe or you could do, say, like this behavior goal and outcome goal for next leg day? Mm -hmm. What do you think you what do you think? I would just uh, increase the weight that I usually lift. So um, I would like, uh, I can check my phone actually right now to see the yeah check to see the numbers. Oh, shoot, but, we um, here. Well, I don't care yeah, if nobody's yeah. watching. We good. We good. Uh, <laughs> so let's see two. Because you figured three hundred to three twenty, that's twenty pounds. Mm. So maybe if you go up four pounds a week on the that's on a max. Right. But then, like you said, for training, what do you so think? So I think I just do like around. If 300 is the one that I can only do two times, then I'd do, I'd say maybe 280 or yeah, like about 275 around there. And right. like just doing that consistently. And like if I start to find that easier, like I see I'm doing more reps of that, I increase. Okay. And just um just increasing the weight so that I'm not staying at the same progress. Right. Every day. Because do you have, when you go to do back days, do you have like a routine? Like I yes. start with 300 this many times, then this, this many times. Yes. Like, so okay. I start with certain rep maxes. So, okay. And, and those can change. So like, I won't say a specific number. Uh, I'll say I'll do a certain rep max. So if I have like, um, like here, if yeah, I have, give me an example, if I have 215 is my 12 rep max, right. I'll say, okay, I'm doing my 12 rep max. So I'm going to do 215. I'm, I do that 12 times or more if I can. Okay. And if I realize I can do it more, then I switch it to a higher 12 max because okay. I so don't. would you say that maybe increasing your 12 rep max over those four weeks? That would help. Yeah. Okay. Would, I so think with that re would and that's what I'm saying, getting more specific with the behavior-based goals, mm -hmm. right? So finding out exactly now that you know the one rep max you want, you say, okay, well, my workout weight may be like you said, we'll take the 215 at 12 reps, right? Mm -hmm. So you may say, okay, well, next time I go in there, I'm going to do either 220 at 12 reps or increase the number of reps with that same weight. Yes. Um, that's called, what do they call that? Man, gradual progression, yes. right? But setting a schedule of gradual progression, because if you, like you said, if you do the same thing over and over again, you're not going to get any different results, right? Mm -hmm. So although we're not going to go completely through this, of course, you can complete more of it. 
we want to look at really getting very specific behavior based goals. So sitting and going, okay, what's my current 12 rep max? Okay, I need to add four pounds to that because you're basically trying to add four pounds each week, right? Because four, oh, well, five pounds each week, five, 10, 15, 20, because you're trying to get your one rep up 20, right? Okay, so that's, and this is just kind of giving you guys an idea of how to really start thinking about your goals and where you're trying to be versus where you're at. Because a lot of times what we do a uh, little too, the normal workout. Oh, the normal workout is three times a week. Okay, you're saying, okay, so Craig says, you said the normal workout for one one group is three times a week? Uh, I don't know. You can leave a, a comment because I see what you're saying. You said, uh, sounds like he's putting too much tension on his body. Talking about with regards to his leg. Okay, the normal workout is three times a week. Well, yeah, I mean, he goes to the gym, I think, every day, right? Yeah, I go to the gym every yeah. day, and I train back he, every uh, every once every week. What he says is he trains back once every week, yeah. right? So that's what he's saying. It's not that he, he doesn't go uh, just one day out of the week. So you're saying train uh, – what you're saying, Craig, is train the back three days a week? um okay so we'll we'll look into that and and definitely um dm me dog so we can we can talk some more about that that'd be you know some good a good piece of advice but with regards to the packet guys that's kind of just to give you an idea of how to go through it matter of fact since we're here before we go we're going to go through this body type assessment to kind of get an idea uh this is a major part of the packet, a major part of what you need to know was starting with the truth. What kind of body type do you have? All right. So first we're going to do it. I'm going to ask you these questions and you just answer them. All right. So it says from an objective standpoint, which of the following factors seems most prominent or dominant on your body when you look in the mirror? Do you, would you say your bones are most prominent, your butt, your muscles are most prominent or your body fat? What do you see more of? I definitely say my muscles. Okay, you see more muscle than anything. Okay. Um, how do your shoulders compare to your hips? Would you say my shoulders are narrower than my hips? They're approximately the same? Or would you say your shoulders are wider than your hips? I'd say they're about the same. They're about the same. Okay, yeah. got you. Now it says, which of the following objects best describes your body shape? A pencil, an hourglass, or a pear? So I, pencils kind of stray up and down. Right. Yeah, um, I'd, say, I'd say an hourglass because, you know, my chest, like, kind of, it's, my chest and shoulders are kind of, like, wide. And okay. then, like, you know, because of leg day, like, I'm starting to get more definition of the legs. So, like, it's kind of more of an hourglass. Okay. Yeah. Now it says, if you encircle your wrist with, wait, if you encircle one wrist with your other hand's middle finger and thumb. So, basically, if you go like this, right, your middle finger and your middle thumb, finger, thumb, put it around your wrist. All right. What happens? My middle finger and thumb overlap a bit. Do they overlap? Um, do they touch just barely? Or is there a gap between your middle finger and your thumb? Uh, they kind of overlap see. a little. They, they overlap yeah, they do overlap. Yeah. Okay, so his overlaps. All right. Now, five, when it comes to your weight, which of the following patterns best describes your history? Do you have trouble gaining muscle or body fat? Uh, do can you gain and lose weight without too much difficulty or would you say that you gain weight easily but have a hard time losing it uh i'd say b like i think if i if i have a goal of like gaining or losing weight i feel like i could just set up the plan and it'll go like fairly quickly yeah okay 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 number six here says uh think about what your body looked like before oh be before you kind of had bad eating habits mm -hmm. Uh, once you reached your full height as a teenager, how did you look? Would you say like basically before you started working out, would you say that you looked long and lanky, strong and compact or soft and full body? Yeah, I'd say soft and full body. Like, okay, I was never really like super, super unhealthy. I was just like I wasn't in really good shape. Right. Like, necessarily tone. Of, yeah. OK, got you. All right. Now, let's see if you've been exercising regularly. And you were to take a break for a few months, what do you what would happen to your body? Would you lose muscle and strength quickly? Would your body not change that much? Or would you say your body would soften up significantly and you might even gain weight? Yeah, I'd for a few months, I think I'd say uh my body would soften up. Soften up. Yeah. Okay, got you. 
Now it says, hey, okay, put on a pair of form-fitting jeans or where on your body do they get extra clingy? So when you wear it, when you, even though I don't advocate <laughs> wearing skinny jeans, when you, I know you've tried them on and stuff. Yeah. Where, where does it cling the most, would you say? Uh, Around like the, uh, wait, oh. Okay, let me see. He says, they do, in fact, I can't keep them up without a belt. So that would be the skinny thing. Okay. Like, okay, would you say with a bit of work, I can wiggle my way into them over my muscular thighs or do they get caught on your butter belly? This is kind of uh, more of a girl question. Yeah, I for me, I'd you... say uh, probably B. Like, okay, B, like the thigh Yeah, area. like I'd struggle, but like I could get it on. Right, okay, got you. It just feel weird. <laughs> right. Okay, so it says when you have a serious carb fest, when you eat a lot of carbs, you know, mm. pasta, slices of bread, pizza, how do you feel afterwards? Do you feel the same as you usually do, normal? Do you generally feel good, though I notice ab muscles are extra hard and my belly feels full? Or more often than not, do you feel tired and bloated for a few hours? Uh, I'd say I generally feel good. Like, Okay. Uh, you generally feel good? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Like when I after eating them, like I don't feel like super groggy like, and stuff. Yeah, not not really. Okay, okay, okay. Got you, got you. Yeah. Now let's see. Number ten. It says, "How would you describe your body's bone structure? Would you say that you have a small frame, a medium frame, or a relatively large frame?" Uh, that's a good question. I'd say like a. I know it's definitely not small. Yeah. I don't know if it's like large either. So I'll, I'll go medium. Medium. Okay. Yeah, I'll go medium. So now, and I'm going to count these up. All right. So figuring out your body type, we're going to count how many A's you got. I don't think you have any A's. Oh, wait. You got one. One A. Okay. Let's see how many B's you got. Let's see. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven. You got seven Bs. All right. Let's see how many Cs you got. Let's see here. One, two. So you got two. All right. So based off this, says you're one of the blessed mesomorphs. Mm -hmm. All right. So how you do is you count these up. You count your A, B, and C, and based on whichever number is the highest. That is uh, based off of really your own estimation of your body type. Mm -hmm. And mesomorphs, okay, so ectomorphs, like I said, and you'll see in the packet, naturally skinny. They're lanky. They, uh, they don't gain a lot of weight easy, but they don't keep a lot of weight. You know, um, your mesomorphs, you know, you guys are the genetically blessed ones. You can gain muscle fairly quick. You can keep it for a while. Um, you can shed fat and gain muscle easily. And then endomorphs, they easily gain a lot of fat and it's hard to lose. They're the ones that struggle the most, where most people are. And then you also have hybrids. I would actually say that uh, that you're, you're probably, I would say meso, but I would say more endomeso. Mm. So you can gain some fat, you could get rid of it. But like you said, the fact that you kind of, you would get soft after a while, right? Um, so you do work at it a little bit now because you work out a lot, you don't see that. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so for you, you know, like it says, typical tips for mesomorphs, balanced diet of vegetables and fruits, right. Mm -hmm. Eat less food that has calories or high in calories. So you don't need a lot of calories. Right. And then, uh, don't cut your meal though. Mm -hmm. Like, you can eat a regular meal. You don't really necessarily need to cut because you're really more about at this point, maintenance and just hardening your muscles, really yes. kind of toning. But at the same time, like you wouldn't eat a whole lot of carbs. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, and, and your vegetables and fruits, you want a balance of that. Right. So for you guys out there, when you go through this packet, you know, make sure you save because I got to make sure I say this. This is actually in the Dropbox, but you want to make sure that you go through this part so that you can get to know your body type. And this is, I even got the source here where I got all this from. I did not make this up, um, nor am I claiming to. You can click this pat, click this link here and it'll take you to the full site, which has extra information for the hybrids. If you're a mix between, you know, um, yes. And yeah, it does, uh, <coughs> your metabolism does matter. Endomorphs will have a slower metabolism. Right. That's the reason why they keep on a lot of fat. 
So if you're an endomorph, you're going to do a lot more cardio. All right, I can tell you that off right. If you know you have a slower metabolism, most of those people are in the endomorph category, which is the reason why it takes them longer to burn off fat. So they have to do more cardio than, say, an ectomorph, which is the naturally skinny people. The naturally skinny people burn stuff fast. That's the reason why they always stay normally skinny. Metabolism. Um, and the question he asked, you know, I, like I know it was spelled wrong, but it's all good. You put metabolism. Does it depend on metabolism? Um, and yes, it does, Craig. Your metabolism does matter. Um, now, of course, the way your natural body is built, all of that kind of your metabolism kind of has something to do that. The thing with naturally skinnier people is they're more inclined to have a higher metabolism, right? Because they that's a part of how they are able to keep the fat off naturally, like your real skinny folks. And then people who are endomorphs, normally their their metabolism slower. So they have to ramp it up and keep it up for a longer amount of time in order to burn the same amount of fat that say an ectomorph would want to burn. But with an ectomorph, if they're if an ectomorph is trying to gain muscle, they don't want to do a whole lot of cardio. You know what I'm saying? They they not not an extra amount because they're gonna they'll be quicker to burn fat and then start burning muscle quicker than say an endomorph, right? So these are the reasons why you want to start studying your uh, body type and getting to know what your body type is actually. All right, so. I'm going to, you know, we're at 46 minutes, so I'm going to end that there uh, without, well, we're in a couple days or maybe even tomorrow, I may get into, this is the when I'm tempted to use. You would do this. This is with regards to those who have the, who may be struggling with the alcohol free part of the uh, goal and as people such as myself, right? So I could actually go through this. Of course, my son wouldn't because yeah. thank God he doesn't drink. For me, I go through this. Uh you know, looking at um, looking at when getting in a jail of when you are tempted to use. And I would say for those people who say, well, I'm an alcoholic. Naturally, I want to drink all the time. There are times when you're more tempted to use more tempted. Right. Um, you may not have withdrawals, but if you start thinking, oh, I'll just have one drink and then end up, you know, falling into the abyss like I used to, then you would click that. You would add that, right? So you want to kind of go through these to get yourself an idea about your cravings. Locate those times and situations where cravings will be more prevalent. So you guys can go through that, all right? And then there you can add in, if there are some situations that aren't listed here, I put a note section here where you can add that as well. And we'll go more in depth and in, into depth with that on the next broadcast, all right? So I want to end that. For those who may have been trying to check us out on Clubhouse, I apologize. I went in there and then I messed something up, left the room, and then I got to figure out how to set up the other room, but I didn't want to do that while I was sitting here. Um, but definitely follow us. You can go to sobrietyandblack.com to um, uh, you know keep up with everything. If you're on IG, you can go to the link. I have the link tree there where it'll show you the links to everything. And next, you know, in a couple of days, I will set up another clubhouse room for those that are more clubhouse friendly. But I want to thank you guys for checking us out. I hope this poured into you. I hope this exercise kind of gave you, you know, hopefully will encourage you to use the participant packet. If for no other reason to read through it and to consider the things in it, I would definitely suggest filling it out, saving it. And then also remember too, at the end of the packet here, down at the bottom, make sure you mark your day. So for my son, you know, he can, and this is, this is really about more focused on the, alcohol free part. So for every day you don't drink, you mark you mark your day, all right? Now, for those like my son who isn't uh oh, and then you want to track your weight. Don't forget to track your weight up here. Do you know how much weight we still got to track your weight? Find, yeah. yeah. Cuz this was my packet, so I got to change all this for you. But you'll put your weight, put your goal, your your health and fitness goal here and then use this as your calendar. I put it your score calendar because you are going to keep score. Because remember, as we say here, that which is monitored is managed, all right? The more you monitor your goals, make them specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and timely, right? The better you're going to be at your ability to attain those goals. So I want to wish you the best. We're going to be signing off. You guys have a great day. Let's keep it up with the Alcohol Free and Fit Challenge. 
root to my Q's. Oh, ain't much love to the cap as they celebrate. Uh, today is their, uh, I believe, 112th anniversary. So want to shout out to them. My Kappa brothers out there, much love to you. You know, um, hope you guys had a great day. And until next time, peace. <laughs> oh, shoot. Let's see here. There we go.